Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to review this Vostok. Uh, and uh, first of all, a shout out to Jody. Thank you for making this available. Uh, he runs just one more watch channel and I'm sure most of you have already checked that out. But if you haven't already, do go over and take a look. It is an excellent channel. He's got some very good content and exciting style that he has developed so you know i will put some links here and go over and take a look at his channel if you haven't already uh, guys uh, this is a vostok amphibia and i'm gonna open it now and just get into the piece so already you see uh, that this is a very basic plastic box nothing fancy but you know i think i really don't expect anything more for this price point so just gonna put that aside and focus on the piece now this is the Vostok Amphibia Scuba Dude 710634. Uh, now, Vostok, of course, was established uh, in uh, around World War II. I think 1942 is the official date. Um, it became the military watch supplier of the uh, Soviet Army, uh, and, and that uh, was an official uh, designation. Uh, the Amphibia design really came about in the 1960s, I think around 1967, and there is a massive range of variations of uh, Vostok Amphibia watches that you will find on almost any retail site uh, that you look at. So it, it's really quite confusing and I don't know what the exact number of variations are. Do let me know if you are aware of that, but uh, you know, it, it really boggles the mind. I found it quite confusing to look through, but this particular model number uh, that I uh, quoted, I believe uh, it, it does refer to the dial, uh, the bezel, the bracelet choice really. That, that's my uh, understanding in just uh, browsing through these different models. Uh, this uh, particular model, uh, it retails for around the 80 to 90 USD mark at the moment on various sites that I have seen. Um, so, you know, Vostok has a very interesting story in that uh, because the Soviets uh, became separated from a lot of the world, particularly Europe uh, watchmakers uh, in the Cold War, they really had to find their own way to make their own watches for their military in particular, as well as for civilian use. And, you know, they, they really invented a lot of their own stuff. And this one has a very interesting story, which I'll go into in a little bit uh, later in the video. Um, so the movement here is a Vostok uh, original, of course. It's the 2416 movement, a movement that is used in a lot of uh, amphibia watches. If you take a look through, it is a 19800 beat per hour movement. So that's a bit unusual already to start with. Uh, now, usually watches are around the 6 hertz mark, you know, 21600 beat per hour. This one actually comes out to be 5.5 hertz. So really quite unusual. Uh, you know, the only other watch that has been around this was the other Vostok Ikranoplan that I reviewed a while back, also the 5.5 Hz mark. Joule count is quite high at 31 joules. Uh, the hour reserve is rated at no less than 31 hours. So not a massive hour reserve, uh, but you know, it's there. Uh, it, it does have a Vostok a date uh, set you know, implemented at a three o'clock position here. It does have a manual wind position, but it does not hack. So let's just uh, quickly get into the, the date setting here. If you haven't uh, uh, been familiar with this already, it, it really has its own type of thing here. So I'm going to wind this past the, the 24 hour count first. So, you know, you can see there is the 30th. I'll just get it past. All right, so getting past here would get me to 31st. And then to set the date, you know, there's no date setting position. You got to wind this back to around uh, around the 8.30 mark, I find suffices. So 8.30 p.m. and then go forward again. Right, and then you get the date to click. So that's really quite interesting. You know, it's a very different uh, way of setting the date uh, than any other kind of watch that I have ever uh, come across, you know, and, and, you know, people who are familiar with Vostok, I'm sure you've known that already, but this is the first one I've seen in hand that does that. The case is 41 millimeter steel uh, across in terms of the, the width here. Uh, and uh, in terms of that dimension, the lug to lug, if you will, is 45 millimeters and thickness comes out to be 15 millimeters. So fairly chunky, uh, but that includes the top of that dome 
glass there. Um, you, you've already seen as I pan this around that the case is actually fully polished on the top surface. Okay, the, the, the top is fully polished, right? The crown is a polished plain one uh, and the bezel as well is polished, uh, but the underside is actually uh, more of a matte brushed. And if you turn to the underside of the watch, it is a more of a kind of a brush finish rather than polished. Uh, that, that actually goes for the bezel as well. You can see that's actually more of a brush finish, but everything else, you know, I guess the visible surface on the wrist as you will, is actually polished, you know, adding to the almost a utilitarian uh, nature of the finishing. It's really only the visible surfaces have been finished in the polish. Uh, the surfaces next to the wrist where you won't see when you're wearing it, it's actually brushed. Uh, that, that's, you know, in line with everything else about uh, this particular Vostok that I've, that I've found. Uh, the, the bezel, interestingly, is non-clicking, firstly, and it's also bi-directional you know it, it really does its own thing doesn't it but uh, i think that possibly detracts a little from the dive function of a bezel if you do use these watches for diving you know dive watches let me know about your thoughts on that i, I think that that kind of goes against the grain and perhaps functionally does take away from the the bezel functioning as a dive timing bezel which you really want to only rotate anti-clockwise usually in almost all dive watches I've ever seen. Um, now the case back is the, the you know, that famous amphibia case back and I'll, I'll go into that as I tell the uh, amphibia design story. Uh, so it does screw in and with that screw in crown it, it's rated at 200 meters for the water resistance but that is a dynamic water resistance. Um, you know it's, it's not a static one like many uh, Swiss and Japanese divers that have a rating. Uh, the dial, okay, the dial is a matte black, hopefully that translates. Uh, the, you know, everything else on the dial is printed, there's nothing that you know, it is applied and the loom is kind of applied in little pips there, uh, as well as on the sword and arrow hands and the dot on the second hand here. I don't exactly know what loom they use, I suspect it's their own thing. It's not fantastic, it functions, but I, I think I find that uh, if I you know, leave this through the night, by the morning, I can't really uh, read the time. So that, that's my experience with this particular loom. Uh, the logo you can see there, right? It, it's, it's a scuba diver. And, and I think that's obviously where the name Scuba Dude comes from. I don't know the, the exact story behind Scuba Dude, but I suspect that that's a fan uh, denomination uh, rather than uh, something that uh, Vostok came up with. But let me know if you know the origin of that term. Uh, you can see the term Boktok there, uh, and some people may wonder why, but that's really just Vostok in the Cyrillic alphabet. Uh, uh, Vostok is, as I understand it, means East in Russian. Okay, and then the dome, uh, if you've seen already, is, is uh, you know, nicely distorting the dial, as you see there, and that is an acrylic dome. You know, it's, it's not uh, mineral glass, it's definitely not sapphire, it's actually an acrylic crystal. Now the amphibious story, very interesting, you know, because they couldn't uh, get Swiss equipment, they couldn't manufacture uh, to the same standards uh, of uh, Swiss watches, uh, that they couldn't just copy the way that, uh, you know, I, I think the Swiss water sealed their watches. But very interestingly, they came up with their own way of waterproofing. And as I mentioned before, it's a dynamic waterproofing. So the dome uh, is very, very much a calculated dome. So as the water pressure increases, there is a deformation of the dome and that kind of makes it increase in its diameter and seal more tightly. And similarly with the case back, you can see the words are perfectly horizontally aligned. And that's because the middle of the case back just sits there and then there's a ring that's threaded, kind of a bayonet ring that goes around and screws in to secure the case back against a big rubber gasket and you know again dynamic water resistance as the pressure increases the case back is pushed against that rubber gasket increasing the seal increasing the water resistance uh, rating here um, the crown is another interesting thing uh, you may have seen already as i removed it it's a wobbly crown and that's because it's got a clutch so as you pull it out all right you can it engages as you pull it out slightly 
and then you can adjust the time, push it in, and then it, it wobbles again. It's, it doesn't engage anymore. And that's, that can be alarming to people who are not accustomed to, the, to this wobbly type of crown design. But that's because it's a clutch. When you put it in, it, it is no longer in contact with the movement. So it's independently sealed and any movement of the uh, movement from a shock, uh, it doesn't stress the stem that is attached, attached to the crown. So another interesting innovation in the amphibia design here. Okay, the bracelet, right, look, there's nothing much to say. It, it, it looks solid, but it actually is hollow. I've, I've got the spare links and it is hollow. And the class is very basic, right? The, probably the most uh, nasty basic class I, I have seen. And I can't recall one that looks as basic as this. You know, perhaps some of those uh, uh, Chinese design uh, knockoffs will be similar to this. So let's try this quickly on the wrist here. Right, so, you know, 41 millimeters across, 15 millimeters including that dome on my 17 centimeter wrist. This is what it looks like, 114 grams adjusted weight and it's pleasantly light and I think, you know, fits me perfectly fine in my opinion. All right, so, you know, what do I have to say about this? You know, I'm going to start with the, the cons, right? It really is kind of cheap and nasty, if you will. You know, the, the bezel, you know, it doesn't, doesn't click. Right? It's finished well enough. The hands are pretty basic, right? They look pretty thin and, you know, pressed from metal. The loom is pretty basic as well. It's not fantastic. Uh, the printing is not the sharpest. Uh, and I suppose the loom pips are perhaps the biggest QC problem. If you look at the loom pips, uh, the, you know, the one at one o'clock and five o'clock are somewhat smaller. And if you look at the one at seven o'clock, that's considerably bigger. It, it, it's not even. And, um, you know, they don't all sit in the center of the spot that they're meant to. So, you know, it's not perfect, uh, but functionally it does serve. And of course, the bracelet is, is pretty cheap, nasty, basic. But, you know, uh, polished finishing as well, you know, that's not to everyone's taste, right? But uh, I think this one, I've enjoyed the look of it, right? But not everybody will like a completely polished watch. But what do you get for the $80 you might pay for this? You get, I think, a piece of history. You're getting a genuine tough watch. You know, it really is a tough movement historically uh, described, you know, a lot of uh, tough features, including the, the clutch crown here. It's got its own look. It doesn't homage anything. It doesn't copy anything. Uh, you know, Vostok really do their own thing. And it's got a waterproof and water fastness design that is unlike anything else that I have ever seen, possibly unlike anything else out there. And that, that really kind of makes me fall in love with it. You know, it, it blows me away, the history and the design that comes in this very affordable piece here. So guys, that's my thought on the Vostok Amphibia, at least this particular model. I'm very keen to hear your thoughts. If you if you have a Vostok Amphibia, your experiences, your thoughts about it, you know, how have you found it in daily use? Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. I put out new content weekly, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about everything I review and comment on. Thank you again for watching. And as always, I will catch you next time.